got that axle grease? Yeah, all set. Should have ride smooth as silk. Good. I hope so after all this work. Boy, it is a hot day for this kind of work, ain't it? It sure is that. Depends on what kind of work you're doing. Well, I've been out there riding on that hot, dusty road with that terrible wind blowing in my face. Now, what have you fellas been doing? Oh, nothing. Just working and sweating over that fire over there and fixing wagon wheels, that's all. Now, you're lucky, believe me. Much better than riding on those hot, dusty roads with that terrible wind blowing in your face. Uh, don't let me interrupt. Keep up the good work. I think I'll just go over here and sit down and relax a minute before I go into the house and rest up. fellow that's been working as hard as our brother Adam has here. It appears to me that he's deserving of something real nice, like a, like a cooling bath. Don't it to you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's the least we can do for our brother Adam. Such a sweet guy. Works so hard and everything. Just works himself to death, doesn't he? <laughs> It, it is hot out there on that road, I know. Oh. Adam, you fell down. Oh. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I, I, we're going to cool you. We're going to cool you I up tripped. right now. No, you're not serious. Yeah, you're not well, serious. we are, boy. Oh, yeah. All right, boys, break it up. Break it up. <laughs> what are you doing in there, Hoss? I was thirsty, Paul. What else? Well, Adam, it's uh, good to see you back. What did Hank Johnson want? Well, it was a hot, dusty ride. Oh, can you spare us the details of your hardships and just tell Paul and us and all, please? Well, uh, Hank was up at Sheephead, and he saw about uh, 150 head of our cattle up there. All the way up Sheephead? They're straying a long way from home, ain't they? That's all the way up in Bayoud country. Well, I'm glad to see that you've come up for air, son. Hey, Pa, you want Hoss and I to go up there and get him? No, I think that, uh, that might cause a little trouble with the Piutes. You can make a deal with them, give them, give them half of them strays. I'd see them through the winter. You know, you have a point. Would you like me to ride up that hot, dusty road and settle it? Why don't you give us some hot, dusty help around here before you leave, huh? Oh, no, you two boys have been doing such a wonderful job. You don't need any help. <laughs> Adam, why don't you ride up there? You offer the Piutes half the herd if they'll help you drive the rest of them down here. Seventy-five heads should see them through the winter comfortably. All right, I'll leave first thing in the morning. Good. No hard feelings. No hard feelings. Ha, ha, ha! 
Good morning, stranger. Drink? <clears throat> no, it's a little too early for that. Like a, a cup of coffee if you got one. Always got that. Matter of fact, I never touch anything else but that myself. Passing through? No, uh, name's Adam Cartwright. Looking for some straight cattle that were seen up here. Thought I'd come in and tell the sheriff what I was doing. Sheriff? <laughs> Not around here, friend. McDermott says we don't need one. Well, who's he? Who's McDermott? Now, Mr. Callan, you know you oughtn't be coming around here this time of the morning. Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Mr. Callan. I brought you something. Oh, why, it's beautiful. It's all yours, Scotty. It's all yours for two bottles of whiskey. Now, Mr. Callan, I, uh, now, as much as I'd like to have it, I'm not going to take it, because you've had too much to drink already. Scotty. How could any man have the wisdom to tell another man when he's had too much to drink? <laughs> no, no, my friend, none of us can claim an insight so great as all that. Two bottles, Scotty. Two bottles of your finest. Hmm? Um, at least, will you take them home to drink them, please? Oh, Scotty, just one drink, too. Revive my flagging spirits, and then you'll be rid of me. A glass, Scotty. Property, Roly. I'll thank you not to ruin it. <clears throat> Squaw man here painted it, didn't he? Nobody buys his scribblings, but Mr. McDermott. You ought to know that by now. You are a filthy swine. And you, Mr. Callan, are married to the whelp of a coyote. You got a long, busy nose. 
Just didn't like the odds. Kind of curious, uh, what reason you got for roughing up this fella and trying to destroy a beautiful painting like that? You ever heard of the Paiute? This guy that you feel so sorry for lives with him. He even married one. Now, maybe if some of the rest of us would learn to live with them, there'd be a lot less trouble. A little less killing, a little less grief. Well, you go to your church, and I'll go to mine. Uh, just a minute. You can leave now. Now, listen, you. You picked the wrong town to throw your weight around in. And you, Scotty. You made a little mistake. Mr. McDermott isn't going to forget that. It's more the whiskey in him than being hit by Rolly. He's been this way before. Who's this McDermott that commands uh, such respect from our recent visitor? Well, McDermott commands respect, as you call it, from everybody in the district, white man and red man alike. Except for my place, he owns or controls nearly everything in town. To control him? Mm-hmm, him too. And through uh, his Indian wife, the whole Paiute tribe. Well, how's that? Well, Callan sells his paintings to McDermott. And then at McDermott's store, he's able to buy just enough food to keep the tribe alive. And enough whiskey to keep him like this. He's a pretty good painter. Good? Why, well, a fellow came by here a couple of months ago, and I sold him one of Callan's paintings. Later, he sent me a letter saying that he had showed it to some people at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington. And they told him that given time, Callan could rank with the greatest Western painters. Kaplan, Kurtz, Bierstadt, any of them. It's a very special company. You tell Callan that? Mm-hmm. Didn't mean a thing to him. Well, I guess we better get some coffee in, Tom. No, he's gonna get himself killed if he keeps living with them Indians. That whiskey doesn't get him first. I never saw a man so hated just for loving his fellow man. Yeah, well, it all started centuries ago, Scotty, and it's been going on ever since. Who are you? This is Adam Cartwright, Mr. Callan. First time I ever saw that hired gun of McDermott back down. Adam made him do it, ordered him off the property. Did you do that? Well, let's just say that I convinced him that uh, he might be happier someplace else. <laughs> Scotty! Uh, Bring over my bottle, please, and two glasses. <laughs> don't you think that might do you a little more good? Oh, just don't be foolish. I never tell you that stuff. <laughs> now then, uh, let's have a drink. Uh. Well, here's to you and your work. You're pretty good. Thank you. You're obviously a man of talent, background, education. Why are you burying yourself out here in the wilderness? Well, I married to a very beautiful and lovely Paiute wife. I love her, and I love her people. Does a man need any more reasons than that? No. You know, nobody ever beat that stuff yet. Well, maybe not, Adam. The point is, I don't want to beat it. This is my friend, my crutch. I don't know. Whatever it is, <laughs> I can't seem to live without it. <laughs> but enough of me. Adam, what are you doing in this warm, friendly little town we call Sheephead. Well, as a matter of fact, it might concern you, uh, at least your Indian friends. Uh, one of our herds strayed up here, and 
When I find them, I thought I'd give the Paiutes half of them. Should come to about 75 head. Why? I'd like for them to help me drive the rest of the herd back to our ranch. You're a good man, Adam. You're a good man. You know, a fella like me, kind of, I'm able to sense a good man when I see one. You're very kind, thoughtful, considerate. I want to tell my people, Paiutes, it's a, you're a friend. Hmm. Yeah, a friend. My people. I don't know what keeps him going, Adam. I just don't. Where does he live? I'll take him home. With a small band of Paiutes, you ride the trail north about five miles out of town. Well, better get him on his horse. Yeah. You aren't going to be popular in Sheephead for helping him, Adam. Well, that's too bad. Even the Paiutes, they aren't going to look kindly on you when you take him home. Scotty, you worry too much. Will you live in Sheephead long enough, you begin worrying about your next breath. Cartwright. I came up to find some cattle that's straight up here. Cattle? Uh, a friend of ours saw them up here last week. Then they're trespassing. Take some advice, mister, and just move on out of this town. All right, I heard you. You better hear real good, mister. This is McDermott's town. Is that a public road? Yeah, that's a public road. But you step off of it, and you'll likely be stepping on my property. I'll be very careful. No way he's doing that drunk a favor. Maybe you heard about that little wife he's got out there. Shut up. Huh, uh, mister? Well, what's wrong with you? Everybody says she's a looker. You even said yourself, would it? I told you to shut up. All right, McDermott. You're the boss. Get some men to take care of them cattle he's talking about. Then he won't have an excuse for staying around here. as a friend. You come as a fool. He dead, you die. He's not dead. Just had too much whiskey. Don't talk. Just come and be quiet. I still met. Brother, he is all right? Yes, he is all right, Johnny. Just a little too much to drink. Please bring him inside. Pipe one out. Fire me. 
Thank you for bringing him home. I am Esther Callan. I'm Adam Cartwright. I'd like to talk to you. You give him whiskey? No, I didn't give him whiskey. If you don't mind. You give him whiskey, he die. And my people die. Without him, we have no food. in the spirit and the tears of a great man. You always drink like this? He is sick in his heart for my people and he is sick with shame for his. He drinks to make easy the pain but the more he drinks the worse is the pain. And he loves you and your people. And that love is destroying him. There's a man in town, uh, McDermott. He buys your husband's paintings. Yes. Well, from what I've been able to gather, he, uh, he doesn't like your husband very much. He hates him because he married me, an Indian. And someday, unless my husband goes away, McDermott will find reason to kill him. Stop by and see you in the morning. I want to talk some more with your husband. Thank you again, Adam Cartwright, for helping my husband. Goodbye. Think you can stop hating long enough to help me herd some cattle over here? Be about 75 head. Judging from the looks of your village, you could sure use them. All right. You just stand there and watch your women and children starve when you could feed them. Make them proud of you. Real proud. Wait. What does white man want in return? I'll give you half the herd, if you help me get the rest of them to the Ponderosa. It will be done. Good. Now, you round up some of your braves and meet me at Spanish Peak when the sun climbs to the top. I'll see you then. My favorite painting of them all. It is gone, my husband. Yeah. I sold it for two bottles of rot gut whiskey. It does not matter. Oh, yes, it does matter. It matters a great deal. I'm selling my dreams, my work, my purpose. A whiskey. Why do I do that? How can I do it? You've done so much for my people already. Mm. And you've been hurt so much for it. All I've done is hurt myself. But you're wasting your gift. A gift of greatness. Go back to your own people. Where your life will have some use. Some real purpose.
But as thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. I love you, Esther. And I love you. There's a herd here, all right. If my hunch is right, somebody beat us to him with a running iron. It does not matter. We never really believe in white man's help. Well, now, if you can help me, we'll get him back. If Paiute help one white man against another, only Paiute get hurt. Namotaka! Right. That roll not sight doesn't belong to. Oh, well, that's Rollies, McDermott's gunman. I was looking for my herd this morning. They're missing. Rollies got a branding iron steel warm hanging from his saddle. Uh oh, I was afraid of that when you mentioned the cattle in front of him. I offered half of them to the Paiute if they'd help me. Hungry as they were, they refused. Well, you can't blame them too much. The Paiutes have been kicked around and starved until they're beaten. They're helpless. Yeah, what this territory needs is not only a sheriff, but a good Indian agent. Well, now, I've written to Washington a dozen times. I always get the same answer. Too many other trouble spots. Not enough money and manpower to go around. The Paiute is at the bottom of the barrel. Now, there is a man in Washington that might be concerned for people even as lowly as the Paiutes. Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln? Well, now, how would we get to the President of the United States? Callum might. You tell me how. Well, if we could get him to Washington with his paintings. Well, I don't see what his paintings have got to do with it. If his paintings can move fellows like you and me, would they do any less to Abraham Lincoln? You mean send Callum to Washington? Might work. Mr. Cartwright, you've seen Callan. What makes you think he'd go? He's got to. All right, I'll talk to him. Down up for the boys, Scotty. They've had a long, hard day on the range. You were out on the range today. I didn't see your men. Well, mister, if you was out on that range, you was on my property. I warned you about that. Man has a right to look for stray cattle and have his brand on him. Didn't find any. Did you? No. But on your saddle, there's a branding iron. It's still warm. Of course it is. They've been branding Mavericks all day. Mavericks? With a Ponderosa brand on them? Mister, I'm telling you for the second and last time, get out of this town, out of this part of the country. Adam. Good luck. You picked peculiar friends. First that Indian lover, Callan. Now this one. Friends like that can get you into a lot of trouble. Yeah, just like that. What's the matter with you? Are you crazy? Trying to destroy a beautiful picture like that. Beautiful picture. That's just a Paiute. That's all it is, a stinking Paiute. That's a work of art, you stupid fool. Someday that'll be worth a lot of money. What does an old coot like you know about art? More than you think, Mr. Range Pirate. There's men in Washington that think he's a great artist right up there with the best of them. Washington? Yes, Washington. The place is gonna cook your goose when Callan's paintings show him what's going on out here. Well, 
Well, now, Scotty, that's a very interesting little plan you Indian lovers have worked out. Let's go, boys. Hey, Scotty. I sure appreciate that art lesson. Sure do. Where you go? To see your sister's husband. Why? I have an idea that might help him and your tribe. I told you, white man's help bring nothing but trouble to Indian. Yes, I know, but you can't speak for your white brother. I can't do it. I belong here with my wife and her people. They need me. They need you more in Washington. Your paints, your brushes could tell their story. Tell their story to this whole country. You could make this country cry for its red brother. You're their only hope. You could get an agent out here. You might even get legislation passed to help the Paiute. Governments move very slowly. Who would support the Paiutes if I took my paintings to Washington and wasn't here to paint for their food? Then maybe the Paiute better tighten its belt even more for the sake of its future. A red man have no future in white man's world. He's right. I can only do what I can to make their life tolerable. Tolerable. What did you call this? Your friend? Well, drink it. But don't lie to yourself. That's no more your friend than you are to them. It's not true. I love them. I work for them. That's right. You keep them half alive. You make their existence tolerable, as you say. But when you could do so much more and you refuse, then you're no friend to them. And you, when you refuse to help yourselves, maybe you deserve what you've got. Wait. You say much truth. You still want help, find herd? I sure do. We help him. Food, feed us. You go to white man's government. Oh, please go, my husband. It is your chance to find yourself. Esther. Go before it is too late. Esther, you know me better than anyone else. My weaknesses. And your strength. I'm a drunkard. You are a great artist. And my husband. You believe I can go to Washington and stay sober? I can do everything Adam wants me to do and return to you sober? I believe. After everything you've been through. After everything I've done to you. What do you believe, my friend? I'd bet on you. Well, it's the only thing left for me is to try. I'll uh, go into town and book passage. You round up your braves and let's get those cattle. I don't want to lose you. He will not lose me. You will gain the world, and the world will gain you. Well, where'd you find him? Just where you said I'd find him. Heading for the stage depot. That right, Kellen? You figuring on making a little trip? I'm here because your gunman forced me. Now, what do you want? I just want to talk a little business deal with you. I'm through dealing with you, McDermott. Why? 
You think you're gonna get help from Washington? You think I don't know where you're headed? That's where I'm still headed. You're gonna have to kill me to keep me here. Kill you? Yeah. What a thought. Since you was taking a trip, I was just gonna buy you a little drink. I don't want a drink. Sure you do. You always want a drink. Release it our friend down there at the table. Scotty, bring me a bottle. No, he doesn't want a drink. Scotty, that trouble you're asking for is getting closer all the time. Drink it. Mr. McDermott says you want a drink. Now, you stop that! Free whiskey, ain't it? You are... Now, you aren't gonna kill me, are you? You're right. Ooh. How much do you think it'll take to knock him out? I don't know. He's used to an awful lot, but I guess whatever it takes, we can afford it, huh? What do you want? You just brought your husband home, ma'am. What have you done to him? Well, now, don't tell us he's never been brought home in this condition before. But he would not drink now. Not now. Why not? He's been doing it for years. Just get him out of the wagon. Paintings. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just getting Mr. McDermott's private property. No. They belong to my husband. Not anymore. He made a new deal with me. Winter food for your people, whiskey for him. You are lying. When are you going to give up on that drunken excuse for a man? He is my husband. He helps my people. Helps them? <laughs> to do what? Sit in their teepees and cry over the plight of the red man? He fed us. Sold his paintings. He sold them to me. I fed your people. I kept them alive. You bought his paintings and gave him whiskey to destroy him. No, no. I bought them because of you to help you. No, no! Yes. I've always wanted you. I told you before. I want nothing to do with you. You think he can help you? Look at him. Now you come with me, and I'll feed your people. Otherwise, they're going to starve. It's not, it's not going to be like you think. I love you, too. You do not know the meaning of the word. Oh, well, yes, I do. I'll show you. You touch me and I will kill you. You couldn't. Oh, yes. As I would a wild pig. you know. You kill her? No. She killed herself. Because her husband couldn't do anything but get drunk. Because he abandoned her people. You understand? Sure, I understand. She wasn't much of a loss anyway. Get out! Yeah. 
He's probably been and gone by now. What a yell. My sister, she is dead. How about him? Just unconscious. Take her to a tribe and come back. It was McDermott. It had to be McDermott. Well, let's see if we can sober him up. Get some coffee going, right? Mm. Mm. Not true. It's not. It's not true. It can. It can be true. Not Esther. No, Esther. Esther can't be dead. Esther. Esther. You're lying. You're, Esther. We're not lying. Could it happen? We don't know. It's cruel. Who could do that to Esther? Who would do a thing like that? McDermott? Just like I said, who else could have done it? should have killed him a long time ago. I always knew he was out to destroy me. Not this. Where are you going, Jim? To get my gun. Well, what could Willette do? It's the only way left for me now. It's the only language he understands. A gun. against McDermott is suicide. What else can he do? The tribe prepares for Esther's funeral. You know who took her life? McDermott. Now, wait a minute, Jim. You'll never get past McDermott's guns. And if you do, and you kill him without any proof, then you're open to a murder charge. Doesn't matter. Oh, yes, it does. You're still the only hope for the Paiutes. Now, whoever stole the paintings has to be tied with Esther's death. So why don't we just find out if McDermott has those paintings? He'll never let us get that close. I come with you. One spear and one wobbly gun. Where are you going? Where do you think? Mm hmm Well... I figure my saloon won't be worth much now anyway. Not in McDermott's town. to see you for some time, considering the condition you was in when we last seen you. I'm gonna kill you, McDermott. Is that a fact? You better look behind you. You four against all of us? It doesn't matter. You're the only one I'm after. I'm going to kill you for murdering my wife. I didn't kill her. You did. 
When you come home drunk with no ticket to Washington, she finally faced up to what you are and killed herself. You're lying. You killed her. I'm gonna kill you, McDermott. Hold on, Jim. McDermott, we're looking for some paintings. I'd like to take a look in your store. Not right, I told you the last time you were welcome had run out. Not yet. Not till he looks in your store. What is all this? That's my family. Which means the odds have changed. Adam? Were you about to do something? All of this because of a lousy Indian. You're a stinking Indian squaw. Don't try anything. It's all over, fellas. Now clear up. kind of figured you might have a little trouble. And yeah, we kind of figured it was going to be Indian trouble. No, the Indian trouble's about over. Yeah, we'll tell you all about it. First, we got to get you a ticket to Washington. Thanks, Adam.